turn to somebody to your left and to your right. Say, rest is a gift from God. Rest is a gift from God. Tell another person, rest is God's gift to me. Rest is God's gift to me. Hallelujah. I just want to share with you very briefly on, on the gift of rest. The gift of rest. Rest is a gift. It's not a teaching, it is prophetic. Rise to your feet and lift up your two hands. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. If rest is your gift, and I believe rest is your gift. Now you are not saying, speak it with passion. Say, if rest is your gift, and I believe that rest is your gift, I stand here to receive your rest. As your word is spoken, let my rest come to me. My rest in this area, mention specific area of rest. If rest is a gift from you, and I believe that rest is a gift from you, may we never lose the one. Who... May we never lose the one who wide-eyed, mystified. May we be just like a child, staring at the glory of the King. May we never lose the one. And may we never lose the one. Mm, Wide-eyed, mystified, may we be just like a child, staring at the beauty of the King. May we never lose the one may we never lose the one oh wide eyed mystified may we be just like a child be seated you are be In all your way, hey, and you are beautiful in all your way. God is beautiful in all His ways. You are beautiful. In all your way. Sorry, if I'm not able to speak and I just sing, it's because this is the only way to express it. And you are beautiful in all your way. And may I never lose the world. Oh, the wonder of your mess. May we. Ah. Ah. Oh, may I never lose. All the world and of your man May I see I, 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 Amen The word rests in the Old Testament, of course, the first time the word rest comes up is in Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. 
Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. So the word rest there, the word he rested, the word rest there is Shabbat. So the English word Shabbat is the Hebrew word Shabbat. Shabbat means a couple of things. Number one, it means an end to something. So God rested means God experienced an end to something in this case an end to what he had been doing so rest comes when there is an end to what you have been doing rest comes when there is an end to what you have been suffering if you have been building and you don't end you don't come to the successful end of it you don't have rest so issue of uncompleted stuffs uncompleted projects it means the person involved does not have rest so lack of completion is a revelation that there is no rest rest is completion so the word Shabbat means an end to an end so because rest is a gift I speak as God's messenger the word messenger in Hebrew is malak. It's from that word malak that we have, mal, we have king. So the word malak means king. It means ambassador. It means messenger as prophet, as teacher, as priest, whoever is sent by God. It means an angel. So when I say I'm God's angel, I'm God's messenger. What makes an angel a messenger Powerful, relevant, it's not a stature, it's not anything. It's about what is given to the messenger to deliver. God has revealed to me and has confirmed in my life that rest is a gift. I know it, I don't need to talk about it. I have experienced rest. I have fought things, visible things, invisible things, Describable things, indescribable things, explainable things, unexplainable things. In all of these seven years, I have, I have met many things. I have hugged death. I have kissed destruction. I have, sh I have greeted failure. And in all of this, I stand here today because God has not allowed rest to depend on my work. I have failed severally. I have had setbacks. I have had moments of depression. Moments I have not shared with anybody, not, not even the first lady. I guard her so carefully, and she knows I do, so that I don't share my emotion. Most of the time, she only knows I'm carrying something. It's enough for me to be broken and make sure she does not share it. So, so many things in the process of seven years. I keep saying it is, I took the decision, no one else will carry it, I carry it. But the, the strange thing that proves God real is that I stand and I have rest. I don't struggle to sleep in the night. I have rest, not in some ways. I have rest all around. Seven years later. So I know that God gives me rest in order to give rest. No messenger is relevant except is an experience of the message he carries. That is why prophets that were supposed to prophesy woe, to prophesy trouble, they first of all go through trouble. People like Jeremiah, he said, nobody, nobody takes, takes things from me and I don't take from people. I don't borrow from people. Nobody takes loan from me. When I say I will not speak, fire in my bone. And if I speak, trouble. I have no friend. Why? God raised him to speak urgently and rebuke the people of Israel and bring, him to bring them to repentance. So when God wants to use you to change people's life, God gives you a change. When God wants to bring you to bring salvation to people, God gives you salvation. 
you don't have qualification to preach what you don't experience. If you preach what you don't experience, you are not a messenger. You are not a witness. You are a pretender. So I stand here, let me introduce myself as God's Malak. God's angel, God's messenger, God's prophet, God's king, God's ruler, God's prince. And I say, because Shabbat is an end to something, whatever it is that has been protracted in your life, maybe you are building, but it doesn't seem like it will end. And you are going through suffering and pain and trial, it doesn't seem like there is an end. I give you rest today. I give you God's rest today. By that rest, I put an end to something in your life. Mention, what is it that I put an end to? Mention it. Because you are the one who will know. Mention it. An end has come to this. An end has come to that. An end has come to this. An end has come to that. I put an end to sickness. I put an end. I put an end to shame. I put an end to building and not, never completing. I put an end to toiling and not having result. I, I bring an end to the process of marriage that has not yet led to marriage. I bring an end to a protracted legal tussle. Whatever, whoever is it that is standing here and your court case seems like it will never end. I sit as a judge, as a messenger of God, and I bring an end to that court case in the name of Jesus. Shout an end. Absolutely be seated. The word Shabbat means silence. So what we call rest is silence. It means if there have been noises, noises, noises everywhere, rest means silence. Like Jesus being in the boat with his disciples. The storms were raging. Noises everywhere. Fears everywhere. The fear of death can be the noises in your spirit. The fear that you will collapse. You will not be able to send your children to school. The fear that you will never make it through the sickness. The fear of this. All these noises. When God gives you rest. Which is Shabbat. It means silence. By the name of Jesus Christ. Who spoke to the storm. And everywhere was quiet. I speak to tumor. I speak to cancer. I speak to leukemia. I speak to spinal cord injury. I speak to noises in the brain. Somebody who is constantly hearing noises inside the head. I say, silence! In every court where there are conspiracies, agitations, where there are accusations, condemnations, judgments, every word is negative, night and day, wherever your soul is bound, and all you hear is that you will die, noises and voices of death, you will die, you will not make it, you will not rise, you will not give birth to your children, and if you give birth, you will die, you will not marry, if you marry, whatever is the noise, I disregard the source and I stand by my source. The finished work of Jesus by which I am God's messenger is son in the son. I declare silence. Use those words, silence. Speak to things in your life. Say silence. Mention things and say silence. Noises in the office, silence. Noises in your health, silence. Speak for 30 seconds. Reverberate. Let it resound. Let it resonate. Let it re-echo everywhere. Silence. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Be seated. Shabbat, which is rest in English, means cease to cease. To cease. It has to do with coming to an end. Stopping. Stopping. Cease. Cease to operate. I speak to witchcraft operation. I speak to marine operation in somebody's marriage. I speak to what devours, what eats, what destroys. 
I speak to whatever is inside of you that sucks you up and dries you up. I speak to whatever is in your house and melting you apart. I speak to secret workings of darkness that you know nothing about. Oppression that is digging the ground beneath your feet so that suddenly you will fall into the pit and never come out. Cease! The hand of the slaughter cease. The movement of the invaders cease. The sucking of the vampires cease. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Be seated. The last and the first thing I want to say here about Shabbat, about rest, is to do away. So when the scripture says, and on the seventh day, Genesis chapter 2 verse 1, on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had done and he rested. On the seventh day, rested here means he did away. So the word rest means to do away with something. Do away with wastes. Do away with sickness. Do away with battle. Do away with the destroyer. Do away with the dragon. Do away with whatever had held on to you that you cannot move on. Rest means doing away with what takes joy from you. Doing away with whatever eats your strength. Doing away with whatever stops the plan of God for you. And I stand as God's messenger. From the office of the only son who is the messenger of the father on earth. In whom dwells the fullness of God, the fullness of divinity in bodily form. With him as my, my character, with him as my age and my rank, I do away with the destroyer in your life. I do away with the killer in your life. I do away with the waster in your life. I do away with the hindrance in your life. I do away with the obstacle in your life. Shout Jesus! Say, I rest. Lift up your two hands. Say, I rest. God has done away with the destroyer of my life. Therefore, I rest. I rest. I rest. I rest. I rest. I rest. Sit in your rest. Hallelujah. Still Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. Rest. The foundation of rest is completion. I've told you that. That Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 said, Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. That means completed. Once there is completion, there is rest. What is the basis of me speaking rest? As God's gift today because there is completion. Jesus on the cross, before he died, he managed to say something. In all his agony and pain, he had enough strength to say the last line. It is completed. It is finished. It is perfected. Except that word can be reversed. The day that word is no longer found to be true, that is the day God, God will no longer give rest. Because there has to be a finishing before a resting. And so Jesus Christ did something. He said in the rest of the New Testament, it's not because you have been able to, by your strength, finish it. If your strength is not enough to build a house, that is why you need a helper. Whatever you need to do that your strength is not enough. He said, I finish it. Therefore, rest now comes as a gift. As a gift, when you talk about gift, gift is something that you don't have in a normal, normal situation. If gift is what you already have, it's not valued. It's not really called gift. Gift in a true sense of it is number one, you are not able to afford it. You don't afford it. You don't have it. You could not have afforded it. You could not have done it. You could not have worked it out. So the word gift is beyond just, oh, I'm gifted with this, I'm giving somebody, oh, I'm anger chief. Oh, it's a gift. Oh, it's a gift. There are gifts that are not gifts in the true sense of it. So gift in this case is grace. Grace is what you cannot afford. 
So when we talk about gift in a biblical context, when the scripture says God gave rest, if they could achieve rest, and God doesn't give you what you can afford to do. Whatever you can afford to do, God will not do it. A lot of people wake up in the morning, very basic things they should do. They don't do it, and they sit down and pray. It is a, a religious foolishness. You see people who should go out there to do things, make things happen, create opportunities and do things, and they retire into places and just pray and wait, pray and wait, pray and wait. God will not do what you should do. Everything God gives to you is what you cannot otherwise have. So when we talk about rest here, as what comes to you after you have completed, it means there are things you need to do, but you don't have what it takes to complete them. There are things you need to have, but you don't have what it takes to complete. And Jesus Christ just did something on the cross. Say, it is finished. Say, it is finished. It is finished actually means it is done. It is done. It means gift now, rest now just comes to you. He said, but you know, I cannot afford it. He said, well, if you could afford it, it will not come as a gift. It will come to you as reward. So gift is different from reward. Reward is what comes at the end of labor. So reward is commensurate. Re reward is justice. Gift is grace. It's not justice. It's love. It's the loving kindness of the giver. So this is, if, if we talk about God ended what he had been doing. And you say, oh, so does it depend on me then being able to end what I've been doing? He said, no, rest will come to you because you don't have the strength to finish what you have been doing. But somebody finished something on the perfection. He completed every requirement for somebody to enter into rest. And they say you need to go to India in order to have the medical attention that will heal you. It means until you are able to afford it. And sometimes you are for it and they say you come back the second time, the third time. Oh, you are make, you are, the reference is made that you, it's only in Canada you can do this. And you keep moving from one place to another. But there is a gift. A gift breaks the process. A gift means, oh, you don't have to do it again because somebody did it. Because somebody finished it, therefore it has ended. Receive rest as a gift. Say, I receive what I cannot afford. I receive what is too much for me. In Jesus' name. Only the one who has rest can give rest. Only the one who has rest can give rest. Your wife does not have rest, so you don't tell your wife, give me rest. Your husband does not give. People don't have rest when they get married. So a lot of people think, if I get married, I will rest. Once I marry, I will rest. Marriage doesn't give you rest. It is God who gives you rest through marriage. Once I have a job, I will rest. The job does not give you rest. It's God that gives you rest through a job. So nothing that has rest can give you rest. The only one we know that has rest, the president cannot give you rest because he does not have rest. The governor cannot give you rest because he does not have rest. No man, no power, no authority that is human, that is created can give you rest. Because none has rest. Only God has rest. That is why the scripture says, if you read that Genesis chapter 2, let's run verses 1, 2, 3. Verses 1, 1, 2, 3. In that Genesis chapter 2, thus the heavens and the earth and the host of them were finished. God finished. Because he finished, he had rest. So it's the one who has capacity to finish, who also has the gift of rest. Nobody has the power to finish. Many people begin. It is by help. Even when they finish, it's not ultimate finish. Otherwise, people who are multi-billionaires will no longer seek additional money. Because at every point you reach, there is another level. There is no finishing. So nobody gives rest. Next verse. Next verse. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had done. He ended only the one who has the power to end 
He has the power to end the regime of sickness. He has the power to end the activities of witches and wizards. He can declare enough is enough. And no terror can terrorize again. He can declare enough is enough. The hand of the killer can no longer. Once he says enough is enough, it means he has ended. He has ended. And once he says it is enough, it means he gives rest. Receive rest. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. So only God who has rested, who has ended, who has finished, who has completed, who has then rest to give to you. Have rest in what doctors could not stop. I don't know. I don't know. I just hope that... Um, just hope that I didn't come to do charismatic thing to make you feel good. Fine. So doctors try something and it doesn't end. And doctor will tell you, and very honest doctors will tell you, well, sorry, you will manage this condition the rest of your life. It means there is no rest. I cannot have rest. See somebody, oh, go to the hospital. Oh, go to this. Oh, do this test. Do this test. Oh, do this test. Oh, take this one. Take this medication. Oh, take the other medication. Oh, take the other medication. Oh, take this other one. And it reaches the point somebody tells you, you can only manage it. In this case, there is nothing that can be done. It means the person is acknowledging, I have limits. I am not God. I cannot give you rest. But there is one who can never, who will never say that I cannot give you rest. Why? He has ended. He has finished. Everything required for the doctor to tell lies. Anyone here that the doctor has said you will manage this the rest of your life. I've seen it before and today I'm witnessing it. I contradict what the doctor said. By my God, I end it. I finish it. Therefore, rest from that sickness. Rest from that condition. Rest from that condition. Rest. Shout rest. Shout, I rest. Shout seven times, I rest. 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 Be seated. Rest is from God. The primary purpose of rest on earth, the purpose that God gives us rest on earth is for refreshment. Because if you have been toiling and there is no end, it means life is miserable and life is misery. Continuous pain, continuous drudgery of pain, of struggling. So rest is to bring about refreshment. Exodus chapter 23, verse 12. Six days you shall do your work. Exodus 23 and verse 12. Six days you shall do your work, and on the seventh day you shall rest. On the seventh day you shall rest. Today is the seventh day of the seventh month. In the seventh year of this movement, what a day to meet God. What a day. What a day. And it just blesses me because it just comes together in different areas just comes together in so many dimensions that are deep and deeper than words can explain. Six days you shall do your work. So there is a six day, there is six day for things to happen. Six days beyond which sickness is not permitted to continue. Beyond which hostility is not, you know, six days are just, things can trouble you. Six days is, is just a length of time beyond which God says is enough. So that means in every condition of life, there is a place, there is a time that God says enough. That even you yourself, you are not praying for it, but in the mind of God says, this is not supposed to exceed because after six days is a seven day. That means in these six days, it could be one day for somebody's pain. It could be seven, it could be ten months of somebody going through something. It could be five years of trying to build something. It can be ten years of struggling to build something. It can be six days is just about the time that things are permitted for to happen, that things are supposed to be brought to completion. But on the seventh day, cease. 
do away with and all of that. So it is a divine ordination. That means there is a time for the expiration of barrenness. Even if it is at 60 years, if God says you should have children, that is how God waited till Sarah had entered into a red zone of life and no one will ever think and imagine that somebody of our age, God pushed her to that level to let her know all of these years you've been waiting, there are six days but you have entered into the seven. The day God meets you is the seven seventh day. The day you hear the word of God is the seventh day. The day of impartation is the seventh day. The day of the move of anointing is the seventh day. Kairos, the scripture says for everything under heaven, there is time and what? Season. The Kairos, the appointed time and the scripture says today is the day of salvation. This day, the day of grace, the day of visitation when the angel comes, this is the time. When the three divine beings in Genesis visited Sarah or visited uh, Abraham and they said by this time next year, Sarah could laugh. It does not matter. When the angel came to, Man to the wife, to the, uh, to the wife of Manoah, the mother of Samson, and said, well, I know you don't have a child, but you shall conceive. No razor shall touch, he said, and it shall be a Nazareth. No, you should not take strong drink. The angel just came, and the sixth day folded up, and the seventh day became the day of fruitfulness. The angel of God has come into this house. The message and the messenger of God, there is a sixth day completion. I declare to somebody's life, your seventh day has come. Rest! Your seventh day has come. Rest, 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 say my seventh day has come and I rest. My seventh day has come and I rest. I told you it would be a prophetic move means when I say, say something, you say it. That's all. That's all. Be seated. And why? Do you, he said, you shall rest that your ox, your donkey may rest. And the son of your female servant and the stranger may be refreshed. Now, the reason why God wants you to rest, when you rest, those who are attached to your destiny, they are refreshed. Every one of you here, in whatever way this revelation fits into you, and you fit into this, I have entered my rest. You be refreshed. I have entered the rest of this call. You be refreshed. I have entered the, re the rest of this call. You be refreshed. You be refreshed. You be refreshed. You be refreshed. Let your business be refreshed. Let your business be refreshed. Let your home be refreshed. Let your household be refreshed. Let your family be refreshed. Let your marriage be refreshed. Let your children be refreshed. Let your businesses be refreshed. Shout, I rest. 